Mr. Samit sir, he has been a senior investor and uh, he has been running a group of companies. Uh, primarily, uh, you know, he has been a uh, founder and uh, uh, you know, a director for companies like Blue and Sky Fashion Brands, as well as he has served as MD of A4 Sir. So he has been investing in a lot of different uh, companies. And uh, today we have invited him to give us insight about the Indian fintech, specifically in terms of the entrepreneurial dynamics. So what all things it takes and uh, you know how, how successfully you can come up with uh, different ventures which uh, which we see in a lot of uh, you know these days that a lot of talent is there but uh, they don't, yeah, they're not able to come up. So uh, I would request Mr. Samitra to give us a little brief in terms of uh, those things and uh, take it forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did I put it somewhere or? Yeah. I don't think that you know this mic is required, but uh, you know, I am always supposed to be a very loud speaker, so long as my conference rooms are concerned. Uh, thank you very much uh, for you know hosting me over here. It's quite an opportunity to see you know friends, uh, professors, right from the industry, and uh, so uh, when I was asked to you know give a you know uh, give a speech or whatever you say over here, right? I was you know I was told to speak on the Indian perspective, right? But I don't want to make it a, you know, uh, that, uh, the typical boring part of giving yarns of what exactly is happening. I think what is happening in India that can be Googled, right? And you can just, uh, you know, find out, you know, what are the norms and nomenclatures which are available. I would rather take you through the journey of what I have done throughout my last 25, 27 years, right? Uh, so that at least uh, that can give you some insight, right, of uh, how India, Evolves entrepreneurs and what is the current situation, right? And uh, that's it. So, can we go ahead? Yes, sir. Okay, so my name is Shomitra Gupta, right? Uh, uh, pronounced differently in uh, different parts of uh, the Indian continent, right? But I rather spell it in my own hometown manner. I'm a Bengali, right? Born and brought up in Calcutta. I did my physics honors, I did my MBA from Calcutta itself, and uh, I started, uh, you know, getting into business, right, rather, you know, I should, you know, take some little bit of a time to explain, you know, what business means, is that when you, when you talk about business, the first thing what you need is basically money, right, you need some capital through the business, and fortunately, unfortunately, I, I don't come from a family, right, which is uh, from the business background, my father uh, was being the, one of the presidents of uh, I, uh, electrical company called Crompton Greaves, uh, my fa grandfather had been working for another electronic company and my great-grandfather had been a Supreme Court judge, right? And uh, nowhere in the domain, you know, I could get a help of somebody mentoring me uh, to get into business. But we had that entrepreneurial bug in the DNA somehow, right? And uh, when I was in class 12, I started teaching a lot of people to, you know, get some money. So... So by the time when I was in the first year of my physics honors, I started my first company, which is basically, you know, a company called Heisen, right, which I used to you know, do some trading. Can I have that the note list which is there because I jotted down a few things. I think I have. Sorry, I scribbled a lot. Okay, so uh, I started this uh, particular trading company when I was in the first year, mm -hmm. right, and it was called Heisen, right, and the whole idea was basically uh, to get into some kind of distribution. But before I, you know, get into the distribution mode, I would, I would just like to explain to you how I started the distribution, because the entrepreneurship started from that particular place. Uh, one fine morning, I was I got up in the morning and I went to a particular exhibition which was happening in uh, one of the nearby places in Calcutta. And uh, I saw there are some computer monitors which are being there, which I have not seen during those days in, in the city of Calcutta, right? And I found out that it fits from a company called BPL. So I, I found out that the BPL is a company which is based out of Bangalore. So I came back home, asked my father, I want to go to Bangalore. So he, he thought that I've you know, lost my head. I said, why do you want to go to Bangalore? I said, I want to become the exclusive distributor for these monitors in Eastern India to start with. and then. 
all across India. So he, he, he laughed at me, but obviously, I mean, we got a positive parents, so they said, okay, fine, you can go ahead. So I took some money in my pocket, which I generated, and I went to Bangalore. <laughs> and obviously, I was there, dropped into the main place, which is MG Road, to find out where is BPL. So somebody said that there is an office over there, in, you know, near the MG Road itself, which is some from Feet Road. So I went over there and said that, you know, I want to meet the people who are selling the monitors. <coughs> So they said that we don't sell monitors, and you know, BPL does not sell monitors. So it was obviously a shock of my life, so I was trying to go back and then I saw another BPL gallery over there, but I saw a monitor over there. So I asked him, do you have this monitor, who's, you know, they say that they don't manufacture monitors. So I said, no, no, BPL does not manufacture monitors. There's another company called ERL, which was called Electronic Research Limited, which is a part of BPL. We some 250 kilometers from there that they manufactured it over there. So to cut the long you know, story short, I went over there also, I spent the whole night because obviously you know, the doors were closed that day and I happened to meet the president over there, uh, said that you know, I don't have money and I've come over here and I want to take your distribution to India, uh, to Eastern India and I want to be exclusive sole distributors over there. So obviously this gentleman said, how much money do you have? I said approximately around some 15,000 rupees or 20,000 rupees. I said, you need to invest approximately 45 lakh rupees, otherwise how will you do the business? I said, that I don't know, but I want to, you know, sell it and nobody can sell it better than me. So he said, okay, fine. Did you eat something? He said, no, I have not had anything because I was sleeping in one of the villages over there and I just came. So he said, okay, fine, you sit over there. So he, unfortunately, I don't know what exactly happened. And I'll tell you why I'm telling this story, right, after this is over. He said, okay, fine, I'll make you meet the CEO of the company. So I met the CEO of the company who happens to be the brother of uh, Vinod Krishnan who was the BPL chairman that time. So he sat with me, obviously his room must be double of this room, right? So I was like lost and I was sitting there and then he, I got the opportunity to meet him and he said, tell me something about yourself. This is nothing to say that, you know, I saw a monitor and it's not there in Calcutta. I've got some you know, a couple of money over here, I want to be the exclusive distributor over there. So he didn't say anything, he said, okay, fine, you go back home, we'll contact you. I said, everything lost. So I took the next train and I came back. Seven days later, I got a call in my house that, you know, somebody from BPL wants to come and visit us. So I said, okay, fine. So my father had an ambassador car, right, where the seats were like, you know, you could get a rocking chair over there. So I took the car there, went over there, picked him up, said, where's your office? I took him to my bedroom. I said, I operate from here. I said, where will you keep the you know, goods over there? I said, we will see. First you give me the distribution, then I will tell you. So he said, okay, fine, I want to meet your father. I said, don't look and meet my father. So when I took my, uh, you know, the gentleman from people to my father, the father got a shock of his life. So he said, uh, he doesn't have any money. And if you give him credit, don't come back to me if you don't get the money back. So, you know, that day I hated my father that day for that instance. But I loved him later on because to tell the truth, so he said, okay, fine. So he goes back. I said, do I, do I start doing the business or not? He said, we'll let you know. Do you have fax numbers? So I, you know, there was a market there. And those times they used to have this fax wheel, you know, stations. I took a number and gave it to them. Trust me, 15 days later, I get a letter from them that you have been authorized the exclusive distributor for people monitors the, uh, in the entire Eastern region and you get a credit limit of 45 lakhs for 90 days. So I, I actually could not believe that he did you know, it has exactly come in. So that's how we actually started, right? I mean, that was the first time we got a breakthrough and we started. Now why I told this story, there are two things, is that you need to take the risk and you need to take the punt. If you don't, right, nothing happens. You have to try, you have to give it a shot things work out. I mean, this is, this is out of 500, you know, good things I tried, maybe, you know, 10 good things happened, rest did not happen, but we still keep on trying. At 46 years of age, as on date, every day I get up in the morning, right, I am that hungry, which I was 27 years back, okay, and we keep on investing in different companies, okay, not because that we need money, because it, it's, it's a DNA, sort of, it, it, it's a game which goes into your mind. So, gentlemen, the whole idea is that it's easy to get into the business. Entrepreneurship is extremely easy. It's, it's not tough at all. What you need is you need to have an idea. 
you need to have the passion to do it, right? And you have to have the risk appetite to move forward. Is there any questions to be discussed? Because then it's better to have an interactive session rather than just giving, you know, going ahead with on and on. And any questions or anything? Should we move? Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay. So after getting into the business of uh, Hyson, uh, you know, we, we, we thought that the trading does not create too much of value. So what we exactly did was that uh, we found out an opportunity that there is a big gap in the market for providing proper services in India. Uh, so I, I found out that, you know, companies like HCL or HP or Dell or IBM, they get goods from Hong Kong and Taiwan over here, right? But when they have to repair the product, they have to send it back outside India because you don't have the repair facility during those days, I'm talking about 22 years back, you don't have the facility in India. So I somehow figured out, you know, there is a company, right, which is in Taiwan, which was also into monitors in India, which was called ProView Monitors. So I got in touch with the ProView Monitors people and then they did a joint venture with us and we started this company called A4Sir with a capital of 14 lakh rupees. So we invested 14 lakh rupees, the other company invested 14 lakh rupees. And we had a 51-49% joint venture with the company. So I myself went to Taiwan, you know, got myself trained, how to repair monitors and, you know, other boards and all. And we started with a small space of some 200 square feet with two people. Eventually, I mean, it was very, very, I mean, it's a, it, was, it was like you know, running on a treadmill during that time, like which I was telling you. Right, I mean, for the last, next five years, it was a grind completely because you run a treadmill, right? You feel that there is a huge amount of distance, but at the end of the day, when you go back to sleep, the displacement is near zero, right? So it bugs you, but you have to still keep the patience to please, you know, keep moving on. So finally, we got some breakthroughs, right? Because getting clients or, you know, customers is extremely difficult, you know, during this period. And, you know, you cannot have smaller customers. So the first breakthrough we got was to get Intel to India. Then we, we got HP, then we got Dell, we got Lenovo. And uh, as on date, you know, cutting the whole story short, uh, I ran the particular company till uh, last to last, no, uh, 2016, right? And then I thought that the company has gone oversized. And uh, I have never run a big companies in my life. So during that time when I when I when I hired the CEO, you know, from HCL and he was the CEO of HCL that time. So I I knew him because he used to be supplying goods to him for the last 20 years. So I requested him and said, why don't you take my place so that please I can start something else? So he fell from the sky and Pratik got the next mail, the next three days later that you know I were moving out and I got the gentleman over here to run my own company. So I moved on and, you know, I gave the whole company, but during that time, it was four and a half thousand people whom I had, right, which has now grown to 8,000 people. And you have, I had 387 offices all across India, right, starting with two people and a 200 square feet office with 14 lakh rupees, right. We raised nearly 100 crores and uh, we made a massive empire, but then we, I thought that it is better that, you know, I don't take more chances because to give it to the right people, because, you know, in entrepreneurship, you have to understand where to start and where to stop also, because if you take too much of punt, then it's difficult, because you need mentors to teach you also. So, you know, he was quite, uh, you know, good enough to help me out, and he still runs the company, right? I mean, I'm the board, right? I'm the managing director of the company in the group, but he is a fantastic person, and we, we learned a lot, because he has, you know, been the CEO of HCL for 30 years, and he's run companies with 70,000 people, with, you know, a couple of thousand crore turnovers, so he comes the company as on the So I, I moved on from there. So let me, you know, I, I just scribbled a few things. So this is a force of as on date, you know, which, which is, you know. Uh, so what exactly happened is that I thought that, you know, it is time that uh, the corp, you know, entrepreneurship takes a, a position where corporate culture comes into picture. And that can't happen until unless you have corporate people running companies. So I moved on, right? And then I started a couple of more companies. It was, I, I ventured into solar. I ventured into, you know, services of different kinds. We, we went to, into the insurance program of care pack businesses. 
uh, with HP and Dell and other people, which I'll you know subsequently I'll show you the other slides. Okay, so these are these are the customers what we have in HCL. And uh, to be very honest, you know, uh, when, when in the last 13 years uh, there was no marketing people, right? There was only one marketing person, which was me. So whether in these companies or whoever it is, each and every company, right? The customers have been generated, uh, you know, by me. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was one gentleman whom I just met. He was in HCL also, right? And uh, I he's, he's not in this class. No, Mr. Ajay. Yeah, Ajay. Okay, okay. So anyway, let's move on, right? So after a person, these are the other companies which we, you know, started, right? Now, BSE is, is into solar. Delbert is a company which is owned by Pratik, so we invested in his company. <laughs> Right, O plus is a you know a mobile phone a business which we had introduced to India, but then, then we got wiped away because you know it's very difficult to survive the Chinese people's you know the Xiaomi or the other people. So we thought that we pull it back, but we're coming out with O plus mobile phone accessories. Right, uh, there are three, four you know these uh, four companies are basically to hospitality. So we are coming out with a chain of restaurants and open delivery systems which we have invested in. Giratan is another company which is like Forest Essential, which is into cosmetics. Deal on Screen is another affiliate program where we, we uh, divert traffic from India outside uh, and get goods from there. We get affiliate margins. Top Hop is a t shirt brand, right? Uh, Warranty Bazaar is a part of A4Serve still, but spun off as a different company which is into insurance program where we extend warranties. When you buy a laptop which will be with one year warranty and it gets upgraded into two years or three years, the entire pro, you know, pro, the entire program is managed by us all across India for all the companies. So that's what we do. Logofook is a company which I run directly as on date. It's, it's an e-commerce platform for refurbished phones. It's a marketplace model, right? And uh, Lulu and Sky is also another brand which is uh, a fashion brand which we have just started in maybe just a year back. Egosip is another uh, cosmetics.